blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. like me well, is what he can do today say hallelujah think of what this man and this woman would have been if they were not in Jesus and think of the big game heaven made when a man like this became a child of God. Can you say hallelujah? This, if you look at this woman, she could win Miss Universe contest. But she, well, people like me, we don't talk too much because you give account of every word you say. But um, I'm blessed to have married a very beautiful woman. If you see my wife, you like to marry. <laughs> if you see my wife, you get out of singles class <laughs> and, join, and join married class. And uh, I don't care what anointing you have when you are not married. 
until you are married, I don't believe you speak in tongue well. <laughs> so, 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 uh, uh, let me tell you what I mean. <laughs> You want to know what I mean? <laughs> if you are not married, you can command fire from heaven. But after two years in marriage, if you can still speak in tongues, then you are baptized with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> so, those of us who have been married for nearly 30 years and uh, we are smiling, you know we are called by God. <laughs> can you say hallelujah? So get married. Get married. Uh -huh. Don't go too far. Uh -huh. Someone met me, Pastor. He says, uh, Papa, pray for me. I, I, I want the Lord to send me a wife. I say, You are not going to get a wife. He said, What do you mean? I say, The Bible says, He that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. God doesn't give a wife to people. He, he... Can you say hallelujah? So he gave he gave Eve to Adam and when there was problem Adam said the woman you gave me so God said from now he that findeth a woman findeth a good thing so you find by yourself so 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 uh, I I am very grateful to God for the introduction God used evangelist pastor belly to bring us together as a family i'm here to say to you i didn't come for overnight stopover i want to assure you and your wife that one the few friends i have in my life that are in the ministry one of the oldest of all of them that i have known is dr and teal and daisy husband we've been family friends unbroken love for 31 years and four months we've never broken and the only people that i don't live long with are those who deviate from what god called them to do uh -huh. and if you leave the course no matter how close we have been i leave you but uh, like here by what i saw tonight i, I thought we have crazy church at home but i saw people who <laughs> i tell you my god thank you for your faithfulness thank you for not being ashamed to represent jesus uh, i thank god for that i thank god for you amen thank god everybody say thank god thank you for your gift to me thank you for your wonderful kindness i believe that i've come just like joshua and Caleb came to spy the land. I assure you, from what I have seen tonight by the Holy Spirit, this is a good land. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. All right. Amen. amen I say amen. amen when you see husband and wife devoted to God in a challenging nation like America don't just dance don't just clap pray for them I, I tell you my wife and I we covenant together uh, I said the vow we took when we got married was just the beginning. But the greatest gift God has given to my wife and I is to know what we are called to do. We, we know what we, are, what we were born for. We know what God sent us to this world for. And to the best of our ability, we do it with the prayers of the saints. Don't get so big not to ask for prayer. As a matter of fact, the bigger you go, the more you ask for prayers. 
Because when you're on the floor, you don't fall. <laughs> did, did you hear me? When you're on the floor, you don't fall. You only fall when you are high. And uh, I tell people, the little, we've all, I have gone around the earth 47 times and I've preached in 102 nations. But the greatest strength I have is the prayer of the saints. I, I don't boast of silver and gold, which I don't lack. But that's not my strength. My greatest strength is to believe that Jesus is the same today as he was before. And uh, I, I covet your prayers for this husband and wife. When you see husband and wife doing what they are doing here, don't think the devil is rejoicing. But, uh, but don't also think that the devil is launching attack. He's not in charge. God is in charge. Uh, I tell people, don't over-respect the devil. But don't ignore him. Are you hearing me? Some people say there's no devil. He is dead. He's alive. But he doesn't have power over us. If God gives you a message, you don't struggle. Can you say amen? amen? You don't struggle. If it's a message from God, you don't struggle. If it's a message from God, even if it's three minutes, the person God sent you to, will receive it Amen. and uh, if you are finding it difficult to preach you know God switch off Amen. did you hear me yeah. All right. some of the things that has helped me in 32 years and 5 months in the ministry Lord I want to share with you tonight Exodus chapter 14 take your Bible Exodus 14 verse 1 And the Lord spake unto Moses saying Say that with me I didn't hear you The Lord spake to Moses saying I I believe in what God said in the past, but I believe him for what he is saying now. The Bible said the Lord spake to Moses, saying, speak unto my people. Which means, even though he spoke in the past, he wants you to hear him now. Say now. now. I told somebody last night, if faith worked before, it should work now. If it didn't work now, there's no proof that it worked before. I love what God did with Moses. I love what he did with Abraham. I even love what he did with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I love what he did with those three people. But the greatest proof that God did anything with someone before is what he can do today. Yeah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. So, God says, speak to my people, saying, speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before Piha Hero. That must be a Cuban language. That's not English. It has to be a Cuban language. All right. For Pharaoh we say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. The greatest time you need to rejoice in your life is to know you are in the will of God. He doesn't matter what the devil say yesterday, today, or tomorrow. Learn to grow to know what God is saying. 
1975, November 9, the Lord woke me up around 3 o'clock. I was crying two days before that day. On the 7th and the 8th. I said, God, look at the whole job. I've been to 49 countries. Look at the Bible school, television ministry, work of the schools, different things. I said, nobody is helping me. Yet, people try to pull me down. They slander me. They insult me. I said, nobody is coming to play with me. They all talk against me. He says, son. I said, sir. He said, you know why? You heard them. I said, no. He said, because you looked back. He said, if you were looking forward to where I am, you would not know what backbiters said. <laughs> he said, any man that bites your back is behind you. So look up to me and do what I tell you to do. Then he said, from now, be deaf to your enemies and be tough in your skin. So for 16 years, I've now been to 102 nations. I have known that anybody who is your backbiter is behind your back. Backbiters. If he was in your front, he wouldn't bite you at the back. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And I know people who slander you want to be like you. If they were more than you, they wouldn't slander you. I told, I told our President Robert, who is my very dear family friend, I said, Dr. Robert, the only people that I listen to when they criticize me are those who have done twice what I'm trying to do once. <laughs> do, do you understand me? If, if, if you have done twice what I'm trying to do once, when you say something against me, I will listen because I have not reached where you are. But if you still have 10 miles to get to where I am, <laughs> somebody say hallelujah. And you say something. You know, it takes this to see your enemy. And every time you do this, you always see Jesus. So it's easier to look forward than to look behind. And if you want to make progress in life, don't spend time to look back. Look forward. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Pharaoh said, I'm going to encamp around these children of God. And they will be entangled. When he was saying that, he didn't know that the children of Israel are the children of the Most High God. But God said to Moses, speak to my children. Tell them to go ahead. Now listen to the scripture that's helped me very well. In verse 8. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with an high hand. Somebody say high hand. high hand. Pastor, that's what you and I need today. The only hand that never loses any battle is that invisible high hand. The hand that never fights war before winning war is an high hand. God said to the Israelite, he said, Pharaoh sees your feet. He sees your head. He sees your hands. But there's a hand that is carrying you. Pharaoh
tomorrow will not see it. And I'm using that high hand. Everybody say high hand. High. Say high hand. High. Say high hand. high hand. He said that high hand is going to carry you when Pharaoh thinks he's getting near you. He will not see what is holding you. Bullets will fly. Arrows will fly. Gloves will fly. Stones will fly. But every direction that the enemy's bullets go, the hand of God directs you. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Pharaoh saw Moses. Pharaoh saw Israelites. He didn't see the high hand of God. And it's my prayer today. That whatever you do in life. That you place your life. In the hands of God's high hand. When God's high hand come. When heat come from the ground. God lifts you up. When arrows of the wicked come from the left, from the right, from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south. There's a hand higher than this ministry that should hold it far from the reach of the enemy. Somebody say hallelujah. God send them out with an high hand. God let them out with an high hand. Pharaoh could see two million people who were leaving Egypt. He could see Moses directing. There was one thing he could not see. The high hand of God. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. That is the hand that provides you money when you are almost going bankruptcy. That is a hand that brings you joy when your enemy thinks you are about to lose your mind. Suddenly they see you smiling. They say, what's wrong? We thought we are going to kill him. That high hand has never lost any war and God will not experiment with you. Verse 10. When Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes. Say that with me. Say that with me. Say, when Pharaoh drew nigh. I didn't hear you. Say it. The children of Israel lifted up their eyes. I don't know what this means to you, Pastor. When Pharaoh's three million troops are at the back, and the Red Sea in your front, and the ground is very near you, which you are already on the floor, <laughs> there's only one place to look up to. Say God. God. Say God. God. Say God. God. When Pharaoh do nine, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and they said, God, where are you? Oh, God, where are you? In the world we live today, there are many Pharaohs in our back. There are many Red Seas in our front. And we are not even sure whom our neighbors are, whether they are good or bad. So when Pharaoh comes near you, marriage Pharaoh, business Pharaoh, home Pharaoh, job Pharaoh, don't look at Pharaoh. Look up. 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 When Pharaoh drew nigh, and this 
Those are two million people. No weapons. No military equipment. No breastplate. No armory. No military gun. No sword. No bullet to fight back. The Bible said Pharaoh took all the best of all the military men he had. And with all the best weapons. Now he's coming so close. But these people, they knew the rest is stood for death. They knew to go back means death. They knew to enter the ground. There was no hole. And there was only one choice. They looked up. And I come in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. When Pharaoh of today come near you. When Pharaoh come near your marriage. When Pharaoh come near your finances. When Pharaoh come from your neighbor. When Pharaoh come to your health. When Pharaoh come to your home. Look up. Look up. They lifted all their eyes. They lifted all their eyes. And behold. The Egyptian marched after them. And they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Say that. They cried unto the Lord. Say it loud. They cried. My brother, my sister. The only time you are permitted to cry. When the enemy is close. Is to cry to God. Because the enemy is not going to say. I hear you crying. That's okay. No. The enemy is not going to hear you. When you say. Hey. All right, it's okay. I surrender. No. So there's only one option. And if you want to cry. Don't cry when you have no job. Don't cry when you have no money. Don't cry when you have no wife. Don't cry when you have no husband. Don't cry when there's no clothes in your wardrobe. Because these things are there if you can see it. But the only time you are permitted to cry as a Christian is to cry to God. Can you say hallelujah? They cried out to God. How I wish everyone here tonight how I wish everybody in this ministry how I wish every singer how I wish every believer how I wish every preacher how I wish children of God know where God is my Bible said <coughs> They lifted up their eyes. Why didn't they look to the people pursuing? Why didn't they call for help from other nations? There is no hand better than God's hand. And I put it this way. Jesus plus nothing is enough. Jesus plus nothing. Jesus plus no one else is enough. He is the one who satisfies my mouth with good things. He is the one when my health is threatened. He is the one that says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. He is the God who supply all my needs. According to his riches in glory. He is a God. Who is a husband. To the widow. He is a God. Who is a father. To the orphan. He is a God. The friend that sticketh closer. Than a brother. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. The church of today. When they have trouble. 
Yeah, looking for a yellow page instead of Almighty God. When the church of today, I just said last night, I didn't know how it came out of my mouth. I said, I'm so sorry for those of you from civilized nations. When you have little, when you have little need, you pray. But when you have big need, you go to the bank. And God is nearer than any bank in this world. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And because in Africa, nobody gives you loan. So you have to go to God. If God calls you and asks you to do something of two million, and your income is 200. God can never give you a vision without provision. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God cannot call you to an assignment without giving you material to do it. A few years ago, God said to me, bring people from all over the world. And once they arrive in Nigeria, give them scholarship. And I said, God, where's the money? He said, here am I. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Say hallelujah. <laughs> they cry to God. Question When was the last time conflict came to your life? Everything about you went wrong. And you cry to God. When was the last time? You went to the bank and your account was in the red. And you cried to God. When was the last time doctors examined you and said you have few hours to live? And you cried to God. I put it this way, Pastor. When your bank account is in the red, you know green is coming. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. I don't know whether you follow traffic light. Every time you see red, you know green will soon come. And God is always on the green side. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. So they cry to God. And let's see how God replied. Verse 13. 
Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Say that to everybody. Fear ye not. I didn't hear you. Fear ye not. Stand still. Say that. Stand still. And see. And see. The, salvation the salvation of the Lord, of the Lord. which he God will show you today for the Egyptians whom you have seen today ye shall see them again no more forever say hallelujah Egyptians the obstacles you are in now God cannot allow you to see obstacles without miracles he can't he is too good to allow you to experience Obstacles without miracles. He's too powerful to let the enemy take you take you to the valley without showing you the mountain. The most high God sent me to tell you. The Egyptians whom you have seen. The Bible didn't say you didn't see obstacles. He said you have seen them. But he said from now you shall see them no more. Everyone say forever. Say forever. Say forever. What is God saying? But God is saying once is enough. For all your tears, once is enough. For your pain, once is enough. For your distresses, once is enough. For your setback, once is enough. When you don't know what to do, once is enough. When the battle is too big for you, once is enough. Everybody say, once is enough. God say, you have seen it. But you are not going to see them again. Don't be afraid of obstacles. Because there's a miracle coming behind every obstacle. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. 1986. I went to Australia for crusade. I prayed for the sick. And the newspapers in Australia are the most vicious paper I have seen in my life. And they said, we don't believe in miracle. If you say there's miracle, we'd like to see one. We've heard that you raised somebody from the dead. Show us one. I say I don't perform press miracle. I perform God's miracle by the power of God Almighty. So the press went and brought 89 years old Indian woman from the hospital. She was in coma. They took her from the hospital coma. They said, we don't know the one you raised before, but we want you to raise one. Why they were on their way to Brisbane Stadium, the woman died. And they came and said, show us your Jesus. I said, if I have ever prayed for anybody 
dead. This one I'm not going to pray. Because this is press miracle. And if you read your Bible very well, Luke 18 said, Many could not see Jesus because of the press. began to preach and when the service was halfway about 30 minutes of my preaching this woman had died five hours ago the Holy Spirit said go tell her to get up I said I rebuke you in the name of Jesus When I said turn to The Lord said turn to her <coughs> I said Turn to who <laughs> To the dead woman The one brought by the press The Lord said yes I tried to raise chorus It couldn't come out I tried to mention the verse of the Bible To read my truth got stuck And the Lord turned my eye to that place in anger and fury I say you foul killing spirit you spirit of death I adjure you in Jesus name lose your grip from this woman a woman I command you get up now in the name of Jesus in five seconds God raise her back to life. Say hallelujah. Everybody say hallelujah. The next day, the press said, we saw her get up. We saw her get up. Just in case you are passing through test. I see you get up today. I see you rise above your own. I see you standing for Jesus. I see the life of Christ coming to you now. I see the same power that raised Jesus from the dead raising you up now. God said the Egyptian you see now which you have seen. You. You. As a child of God. Shall see them no more. Amen. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Why? Why sin and see no more? God can never give you strength to build your tent in your valley. That's why David said, do I walk through the valley? God will never give you energy to pitch your tent in the valley. He takes us through the valley to take us to the mountain. in your valley anytime you see your life in the valley walk to it quickly and say I'm going out say hallelujah don't spend don't spend all night prayer in your valley don't hold party meeting in your valley whenever you find your life in the valley walk to it Say hallelujah. hallelujah. God say you have seen it. But you are not going to see it again. What valley have you been to? How many 
enemies pursue you. The Holy Spirit asked me to tell you. Once is enough. The, the power of God is here tonight. To take you through that valley. And take you to the mountain top. If you love the Lord say hallelujah. hallelujah. Then the word of God says here. Listen to this. The Lord shall fight for you. Pastor Havers. I am learning how to fight less. Every battle I have tried to fight by myself, I lost all. So I have I've changed the size of my gloves. I used to use size of my hand. But I found that God has never lost one battle. And is not ready to experiment with me. If you love the Lord, say hallelujah. hallelujah. He said, the Lord shall fight for you. Well, I used to divide the war to two. Give God the big one and I fight the small one. But I found that he said, the Lord shall fight for you. Now let me ask you a question. If the Lord is going to do the fighting, how many gloves do you need? If the Lord is going to fight your war, how many bullets do you need? Pardon? None. If the Lord is going to take care of your enemy, how much protection do you need? None. The Lord, say that to everybody, the Lord shall, shall fight, fight for, me. for me. Say for me. for me. Everybody say for me. For me. God, God shall, shall Fight for me. Say hallelujah. Let me share this message to two portions. Number one, the Egyptians whom you have seen. That stands for your past experience. It means no glory without battle. I don't know how you people read your Bible. But how will you be able to say, I can do all things when you have done nothing? How will you be able to say, I have fought a good fight when you fought nobody? How can you say my name is Avarice? I can do all things when you have done nothing. How can you say I am more than conqueror when you conquer nothing? <laughs> Battle doesn't destroy a Christian. It strengthens him. Can you say amen? amen? No battle destroys a Christian. Uh -huh. It only energizes him. No battle makes us stoop down. It makes us stand tall. No weapon that we have is big enough to add to Jesus. Jesus plus nothing. Is enough. I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about Anointed Tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com.
Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Say it's enough. enough. Say it's enough. enough. So God said, The Egyptian whom you have seen, to me as a professor in the university, as a regent in the university, the Egyptian whom you have seen, you shall see them no more. That simply means your eyes are no more permitted to look back from today say i am looking forward say hallelujah my sis the egyptian whom you have seen the egyptians whom you have seen you shall see them you shall see them no more no more forever forever that is also a limit that it is true you saw them before but from now you have no right to go back to Egypt to look for Egyptians if you hear me say yes, yes. say yes. yes don't go back to Egypt Egypt once is enough when you get out of Egypt face the promised land face it when obstacles come cut it up when trial come cut it off when fear come cut it off what he says from now you don't need any weapon. The Lord shall fight for you. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. And now. Now that you know the Lord shall fight for you. How many wars can you not fight? Say none. none. How many enemies can you not face? Say none. Defeat do you expect? No. How many shame do you expect? No. How many weaknesses do you expect? No. Say none. none. Everybody say none. none. The Lord, the Lord shall fight, fight for me. me. But then he gave warning. The third part of this message is warning. He said, you shall hold your peace. Do this. Say peace. peace. Do this. Say peace. peace. Say peace. peace. I hold you. Some of you have dropped it already. <laughs> Say peace. peace. I hold you. 
hold it, don't drop it. But look at me. What does that mean? You shall hold your peace. The Bible is telling you and I. From now. When we hear of that fellow called anxiety. We should tell him we are not at home. When we hear of that fellow called worries. Tell him we have been delivered. When we hear of that fellow called anger. Tell him we are redeemed. When we hear of that man called failure. Tell him you have resigned. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. God says hold your peace. Many Christians have won many battles. But lost peace. And God say hold it. Say with me, peace. peace. I won't let you go. I won't let you go. Say joy. joy. <laughs> I won't let you go. I won't let you go. What does that mean, Afosun? It simply means no matter how much water is on my head, I wouldn't let it goss out. You women are so gifted with tears. Every little thing. <laughs> Your child is running and fall and bruises the body, you start to cry. Crying doesn't bring healing, it only adds more heat. So I have learned. God told me, I've already given you peace. Hold it. So when crisis hit my life, I say, Peace, where are you? He said, I'm here. I said, okay. That's all right. Everybody said, when are you going to cry? Peace said, if I see you cry, I'm going to tell the Lord, you've lost your salvation. And I said, okay. is standing with sword and he said if you cry you shame God don't cry so I'm able to say though he slay me yet will I follow him say hallelujah, hallelujah. say hallelujah. hallelujah some of you have sold your peace to the wish of the enemy. I want you to get it back. Some of you are preparing now. To fight your last war. You want to fight and win. I used to fight very well. I have found out. That every time I fight for myself. I lost the battle. But when I let God fight for me. I win before I fight. And you say hallelujah. hallelujah. Because Christ tested death. And beat death. He tested suffering. And defeated suffering. He tested sickness. You say was he ever sick? The Bible says he was tempted in everything. But he never bowed. And now that I have learned. That the Lord is my strength. And my power. I'm learning every day. To say God. I used to fight for myself. I didn't do too well. From now. The Lord. Shall fight. For me. Are you ready to give all your battles to him to fight? Yes. Say yes. Yes. 
Now listen to this. The Egyptian whom you have seen. <laughs> have tried many times to go back to Egypt. But I have a mighty hand that says. Where you are coming from. Is not as good as where you are going. So I stand my ground. And you know, some of those songs people sing in the church, soon and very soon, I don't sing them anymore. I don't want to fly away. I want to make the enemy my footstool. Can you say hallelujah? So my choir used to sing, soon I said no more. I fly away, no more. Jesus says, sit down till I make your enemy your first tool. So what I'm doing now is sitting down and I said, devil, bring your head. He says, he says, Archbishop, you are going to be in trouble. Shut up. Archbishop, <laughs> there's not enough money in your bank account. Shut up. <laughs> Archbishop, there's no money for your ticket. Shut up. has not called us to trouble. Let me tell you what I mean then I, I, I pray and close. This man invited me. Stand up sir. When I arrive airport today I don't look for taxi. I didn't look for taxi. I was not afraid who will pick me up. I was only looking for the size of car that is coming to pick me. And they brought one small three door cars. Three doors on this side, three doors, only about 30 feet long car. I said, is this all they have in this place? But I managed it. I have to manage it. It was between me and the driver. It was about 20 feet long. <laughs> but I managed it. I tried my best to endure the suffering for Christ today. <laughs> then I got to the hotel. And the man that came to pick me said, What will you drink? What will you eat? Then he called the pastor. The pastor came. The best. I now know New Jersey. Has the best seafood. In America. Now. Listen to me before I quit. The car that brought me from the airport. He sent it. The food that I ate. He paid. The place I'm going to sleep. He paid. And this man is not as kind as God. Huh. When the Bible say you are redeemed, it means you are leaving a bad place to a better place. Say yes. When the Bible say you are saved, it means you were lost. And someone greater than this man paid and bought you back. When you say, I am born again, it simply means all things pass away and all things become 
new. As powerful as you are, God is saying, these hands are not good enough to fight. The Lord himself shall fight for you. <laughs> Did you hear what I'm saying? Something good is going to happen to you today. Lift your hands up, those of you who are standing here. Say these words with me. My dear Father in heaven, say it boldly, let the devil hear. My dear Father in heaven, I surrender my life to you from tonight. Listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idahosa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. 
he had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was the Dowser's level of faith beyond man's uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual, a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high and the low in society. A man who rubbed shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. Uh, it, it's a blessing and it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyudepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbenidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told, in the preach, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Ebepo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edepo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached. It was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then sometime later we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onitsha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Odicha. And we went to put posters all over Odicha. And the first day of the crusade, a track load of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform. And, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more 
from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, actually I went there in 79, my class started in 1980 and uh, we went through the Bible training and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools, he started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex, he started Benson Niederhose University, all those. And well, he's, he's a man we can't, we can't forget. He was a great example to us. And I thank God. It's particularly good for us, whites, British, because in Britain, uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore flew to New York and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are, and it's raining cats and dogs. What do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy Daosa. He would say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said, God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down five minutes time. The pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were on the sea. We have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. Now this is where the testimony is. Mama, if was there, you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James. You don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. He called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar, and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. 
Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here, there won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned, his name Chief Eboho, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one-on-one, -on -one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. It also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said there, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits, and I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you, and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, we, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop in Dahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. 
He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And, and one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. What's <laughs> up? And he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, ah, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> and he said, Ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he please, I beg you. Don't don't make a mockery of your God. He said, No, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that uh, uh, behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpent, to tread upon scorpions and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that sick. Raise the dead. I said what? I beg, wait till I talk. Benson, you mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? But you say I can do it. Yes, in the name of Jesus. He <laughs> said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was she. She was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, "Listen, this baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate." And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood, at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Early in the morning when I rise. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? What's the girl's name? I said, It's Inwarata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world knows about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, about three hours later, my father comes, my late Ben in the house. He said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. 
So they tried the in a, ordinary native doctor tried they can raise her back to life. He said, Where is her now? He said, She's swallowing there. He said, He asked my father the question. He said, Daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him come back to life? My father said, Yes. So he said, They should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray, the God that answered my fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm a living so today and he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock sneezed. <laughs> and then I went back to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Many said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Did you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power superpower then i wasn't a child of god my mother used to serve um, she was a princess of olokun shango and all that and i said mm, the the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power so the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayers, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came, 
I said, where is the child? You say the child is there. And I called him to the room. I said, you know what I did last night? I did know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today I'm alive. I have about eight children, two girls, and two boys and six girls. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. 
You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'd like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard searching, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938 to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and the United States while working in Bather Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akpos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young, ben young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a ninth vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take 
the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following, said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his nails before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing, more people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastor churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he also he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of Bishop of, Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robot. Uh, university in Oklahoma. It also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971, a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the World Faith College, New Orleans, and a Doctor of Law degree from Ora Robot University in March 1984. He also received another degree. He also received other degrees from the International University in Bruxelles, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife Margaret Idaosa were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary consign with a motto evangelism our supreme tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all, 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa? According to Mrs. Gordon, Frada Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA. I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching, who is reaching millions as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrate he is especially core of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got 
miraculous answer from his, from this mighty leader of God's people. Said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that Africa has a part in God's work and Africa will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christian in their own land. Idaosa rose from the rank of an ordinary man to award leaders leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself. He was very humble and full of godly wisdom. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was said to be the leader of over 7 million Jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the Lord in February 1998. Now I'm going to talk about his early ministry again. As a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establish, establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa 
was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including "My God is not a poor God." Your attitude determines your your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, Word of Faith, Group of School, Benson Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact, get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.